Can you hear me at the back? Yeah. Uh, are you online? That's good. Good. Well, uh, most of you probably know that I'm not a permanent way engineer. I'm a sort of general purpose civil engineer. So don't expect to hear very much about permanent way technicalities in this talk. I just had a bit of permanent way tacked on the back of my education, uh, which helped me sort of with my career from time to time. Um, I thought it'd be interesting for change just to look back 50 years at what we we're trying to do to reduce the effect on the track and traffic, uh, rail traffic, when we were doing major works. Uh, we we're trying not to disturb the track as much as possible. So um, we were adopting some quite interesting some methods, some of them quite experimental, and um, thought that it would be quite interesting to review some of those things. So, uh, find the right button. Um, Vaston Road, as you know, is just down the road here. Um, we're sort of down there. Uh, and that had to be reconstructed for the um, uh, Reading uh, Council for their inner distribution road scheme, which they came up with in 1960 to try and get traffic out of the centre. Um, and um, this was the last stage of the uh, stage three of the in the distribution road, which had been delayed by objections to the last bit in the south that went over the top of King's Road, sort of just down the road from Jackson's Corner. Not surprising, really. Uh, lots of objections, but eventually they decided they'd better go ahead with it uh, because um, things were getting a bit dodgy in um, uh, uh, Aston <laughs> Road for traffic purposes. So when um, they eventually decided to go ahead with uh, some detailed planning and design, uh, and it sort of landed in my lap being looking for, as it were, my turn for the next job in bridge office, where I was at the time, I wasn't always in bridge office. Uh, my habit at the time was, was to, first of all, to, to look at what was there before you'd actually start. There's no point going into a job, bullheaded and then finding there's all sorts of problems once you start on site. So the first uh, survey I could find was uh, an 1840 survey of Reading, not, not more than the survey, it didn't go back that far. <clears throat> and um, the only reference to a vast and anything was Vaston Lane, which was down at the end of Friar Street, which led eventually down towards the new Great Western Railway, which is only shown in outline and somehow disappeared in the railway with a stream or something. And um, no evidence of what sort of bridge or whatever there, there was. Anyway, further digging in uh, the uh, museum of Reading and their archives, I found an 1853, very detailed survey. This is only just a part of it, just a little uh, snippet. Uh, which was carried out for uh, public health reasons and so on. And that showed quite clearly a bridge. And not just the bridge, but it showed that the bridge was at the time under construction of an extension to the bridge. Uh, so um, it suggested that this was a three span brick, brick arch bridge with box wing walls and standard abutment spanning. Aston Lane, presumably, and um, the couple of water courses. So couldn't find any photographs at all of this bridge or any similar bridges, in spite of the fact that uh, one or two colleagues um, searched the archive, well, their, their, their books and libraries to find out if there was anything like it in the way of three-span Brunel arch bridges. And as you can see, there's nothing there that we could find that relates to what we thought the bridge might look like. So I, I, I drew a little picture myself um, just to sort of get an idea of what might have been there before. And that's based on some other information that I dug out later on. And then suddenly, quite recently, this emerged. 1850 engraving of the two stations in the foreground is the southeastern railway station. Uh, which uh, was actually, first of all, the temporary station was built on the on the London side of Vaston Road, 
And in the distance, you can see a rather grandiose representation of the Great Western Railway Station. And on closer inspection, lo and behold, there appears to be a trestle bridge, which very much surprised me. Now, I don't know whether that's art artist license, uh, but now I didn't think built many timber bridges this end of the country in those days. Uh, but that puts the whole cut the pigeons as to my theory about the arch bridges. But nonetheless, we will never know. Anyway, that was what Vast, uh, the view from Baston Road, as it was becoming or Baston Lane at the time, in 1870, the two stations or thereabouts uh, was like that uh, when they had moved the southeastern railway station to the west side of Aston Road next to the Great Western Station. So things are sort of building up a bit. By 1877, uh, there have been quite a few developments, extra tracks on the north side, which presumably were carried by the large extension, which, which we saw in the previous slide. Uh, the Incline down to the um, uh, southeastern railway to the subway, which is just outside the front door. That was uh, built in um, uh, 1858. Uh, a mixed gauge goods yard on the uh, north side of the station. Vaston Road appears to have been made up into a proper road, and um, things were changing quite rapidly from the point of view of the development of Reading. Uh, Big problem though with the Great Western, dear old Brunel, and this single sided station. You've pro most of you have probably seen this photograph before, but everything had to cross over from the fast lines into the station, which is on the town side. And um, well, there were some very nasty near misses and so on with the operating the fairly primitive scenery. So that had to go. And incidentally, I have, I did have somewhere uh, a plan of that layout in mixed gauge, and that was something to be seen, but um, I think that's been lost. Uh, and then broad gauge was abolished, and they then decided to do a major uh, re re or rather the redevelopment of the station has already started, actually. And um, Aston Road Bridge was replaced, whether it was brick or whether it was um, the Trussell Bridge, we don't know, by bridge, uh, well, a 40 foot span, a uh, single span with a properly made up road. And um, that was more or less the bridge that survived until 1965. And then uh, by 1898, the redevelopment was well, well in the way. It actually went on from uh, I think it was 18, 1866 to 1897. So things aren't a lot different really these days, aren't they? Um, but they got it finished in the end <coughs> with the um, quadrupling was completed and we finished up the station, which, which we all knew and loved until about 10 years ago. Um, but um, then again, Nothing very much happened. There were some improvements and modernization of signaling until 1965, when under Beeching it had been decided to close the southern station. Uh, rather a shame because it's quite a pretty little uh, southeastern railway station, and uh, bring the uh, southern, as it was by then, southern region trains into the main station, which needed a new platform. So, new platform was provided at the east end on the downside, which became known, under my suggestion, as platform 4A, because nobody could decide what number to give it. Uh, and um, it, that was my first site job, actually. And um, to accommodate the track, of course, we had to extend Baston Road Bridge. Uh, I'll point for anybody that can identify uh, three or more people in that photograph. Um, fortunately, at the time, Reading, MRA, Reading MAS is completed, and the East Main signal box, which was just to the well, on, on the downside, just to the east of Boston Road, that had been was uh, had been cleared and was ready to be demolished. <laughs> so demolish it, we did. 
we just collapsed it all into having taken the roof off and having <clears throat> repaired all the lever frame, which was all broken up and sold to a scrap dealer who did very nice out of it, nicely out of it. Um, and uh, the brickwork and everything was just collapsed into the um, main uh, body of the building below track level. And the formation made up for the connection out of uh, platform 4A into a double line connection on the existing a gradient which went down to the southeastern railway from what was called Reading Old Junction at the top of the incline. Uh, and um, I'm always interested in the site facilities. Uh, those are the sites, <coughs> the site facilities, no Porter Cannon City, no Porter Cannon City. As you can see, the, the, the resident engineer and new inspector, they each had a garden shed, six foot by eight foot, <laughs> the desk, a chair, a tilly lamp, and a paraffin heater. Uh, the agent had a much larger palatial uh, establishment, as you can see. Um, and, and in the foreground, just off Faston Road Bridge, actually, uh, there was this little coal depot in a location called Pokes Hole or Pokes Bottom, which is <laughs> What that all meant, I don't know. But um, <clears throat> could I very brief interrupt? Um, Ahmed does. No, he's just turned his camera off. I was just about to ask him to turn the camera off. He's just done it. No. <laughs> no, <I don't. laughs> Obviously, heard me coming. Um, so um, that was the end result of um, the uh, platform 4A scheme. New platform down at the uh, uh, west of Boston Road. Extended bridge, nice new hoarding, advertising silk cup cigarettes, and the embankment mm -hmm. widened to um, uh, where the you know, signal box used to be to accommodate the extra track. Uh, mm -hmm. And dear old uh, Reading South, lovely little station that was no more by the by the summer of 1968. So by the time we got round again, nothing much happened again until. Uh, the um, in the distribution road uh, raised it head. So that was the bridge that we were faced with to somehow squeeze six lanes and, and um, central reservation and two footpaths through. Uh, now down, uh, sorry, up, up at the top, up above, that was what we had. Uh, right in the middle is a relay room, newly constructed by the uh, MAS which had to be moved at great expense. Uh, airspace in the middle, and um, uh, which was there because they added an extra span back in the 1890, whatever it was. Um, masses of track level services as well, all had to be dealt with. So the first thing was to get a decent survey of the job and uh, a site investigation. And in the process of um, uh, looking at the old plans, we found that they actually had the outline of the old bridge piers. I've got there the arch, the old uh, uh, um, arch pier foundations, but perhaps they weren't arches. It didn't matter. The foundations were there, clearly on the drawings. And uh, with probing and drilling, we found that they still existed. Uh, in fact, we drilled through them to see how deep they were. And uh, all in all, uh, uh, eventually I was able to produce a sort of composite drawing, all very pretty and complicated, to show all the different structures that there were there uh, when we were starting the design. Uh, East Main Signal Box, the uh, various foundations, the various structures and the extensions of the bridge and so on, which is very, very valuable to know what was there. Uh, early schemes. Um, had been looked at using conventional uh, types of construction, the classic sort of two rows of sheet piling, way beams of five mile an hour restrictions, um, the um, existing bridge, which is already aged, uh, being retained and road lowered for substra uh, substandard width lanes uh, and difficulties putting in the council what it was a tanking slab underneath to keep out the Flood water, river water, the ground water rising from below, and um, not really a very practical solution. Also, they had to, it would result in a hugely wide, 10 metre wide central reservation because we need to keep 
it was thought that it was necessary to keep the new bridge for, uh, away from the existing one to save jeopardizing the stability of the east abutment. So one of the more recent developments were thrust board abutments, where the idea was that a series of boxes were thrust through from one side of the embankment to the other, one on top of the other, and then stressed together. And um, the idea was that you could do this without actually taking the track up. Of course, because these were all being jacked from one side, each box was moving continuously as each section was fed in from behind. And there was this continuous sliding movement, which finished up creating massive settlement under the track. And various combinations of construction were used, and they were none of them really very practical. So I thought, well, rather than trying to extend the support structures, the abutments up to track level, why not extend the the bridge itself, the bridge structure, down to a lower level? So um, you finish up with really a portal structure. So you can put the foundations much lower down and um, roll the bridge in to sit on low foundations. And you can do all this with minimal disruption to the traffic. So on the Paston Road, it was easy on the west side because we could put the foundation in the west footway. But um, on the east side, I thought, well, instead of these thrust board things where they're really moving under the track, why not use a standard, simple uh, concrete section segment lined tunnel with a great head shield where only the shield is moving forward as you construct the tunnel and the segments are inserted behind the shield and you're using the existing uh, tunnel construction to push the shield so you don't need these massive uh, works for uh, jacking uh, sections through the track. So I worked up this idea where um, we could actually get a 12 foot diameter, 3.6 diameter tunnel through the embankment, giving three metres clearance to the track, still keep above the, the uh, groundwater level. And to compensate for not having an earth retaining structure on the Paddington side, on the east side, we could put a slope up to the bank, uh, bank seats, which would be constructed each side of the track and one in the middle to carry a, a heavy, a, a, a long trimmer beam supporting uh, a side span. So we decided to work that up into a scheme where we could build the uh, structure uh, over the existing road in two halves, one on the north side and one on the south side, uh, using disused land on the, um, uh, the, the east side of the Vestman Road. So that was worked up into a firm scheme, uh, which was put to Reading Borough Council. They rather wanted a sort of um, landmark structure or whatever, so it looked really nice. So uh, we did a bit of pulling up of the scheme. And uh, we had Chris Riddle, the their, uh, our borough engineer, and his bridge engineers, and so on. They came up to look at the job and discuss it. And um, they rather liked it. So after they had approved it and said, yes, go ahead and do the design, and then like the estimates and so on, I remember Frank leaving the then bridge engineer with his eyebrows going up and down and say, so, well, Mr. Watts, he said, you've sold it to them now. I hope you can design it. <laughs> so um, it's a bit of a challenge. But uh, anyway, that was the elevation. There were 18 steel portal frames uh, at uh, varying centres. They, they tapered uh, in plan. Uh, was at the splay in the track, uh, and um, they were connected by a large number of cross girders or diaphragms uh, with a concrete deck, uh, which was um, shear connected to the steelworks. So the deck was taking the the compression, uh, the concrete was taking the compression, the steel was taking the the uh, tension, and um, it was all supported on. Um, uh, on uh, permanent forework uh, and uh, uh, you know, effectively met, met, uh, uh, made each half a sort of mobile structure, which uh, could then be rolled into positions. Uh, 
the question of the foundations was a little bit of a conundrum because the succession of strata underneath, there was some rather messy river deposits and, uh, de de deposits and silts. And at depth, there was nothing until you got to the chalk bedrock, which was about 20 metres below ground level. So um, I thought, well, rather than go all the way down 20 metres with the cost and the filth and the mess of all that chalk coming out and being carried away, and making Reading white virtually, uh, like the um, traffic taking out the chalk, uh, there are some good open gravel there. I thought, well, that's good stuff. It's concrete, but without the cement. Wonder if we can grout it. So we talked to Soil Accounts Limited and their um, uh, grouting expert, uh, who said, well, the best thing to do there, as that's water bearing, is to use a juiced and grouting method, which um, uses uh, two injections, one of, um, if I remember my chemistry, one sodium, calcium, sodium silicate and then calcium chloride, which then gel to form calcium silicate, which then turns the gravel into a, into a weak sandstone. So we worked on a scheme where uh, we would inject the bottom uh, of the stratum, first of all, install the piles, so that they were end bearing on that uh, bottom uh, layer. And then a second process, grouting up round the uh, shafts of the piles to make the piles effectively uh, built in to the, uh, to the gravel. So um, we did a couple of pile tests. Uh, and um, we put in two piles, different diameters, uh, one uh, pile was uh, two foot diameter, and the other was 18 inches or 650 millimetres. Uh, did axial tests and then jacked them apart to see what deflections we were getting. And they were put in with the juiced method uh, of um, uh, the end bearing and the shaft consolidation. Uh, the um, one of the kentles was needed. That was the uh, wow. uh, the the the, the, the palm test, but we got some very satisfactory results, which enabled us to decide to use the much shorter piles and the four fifty four fifty millimeter diameter piles rather than the the, the larger ones. But uh, we also found that we could use some of the existing foundations to support the foundation beams. Uh, the um, one of the pier foundations in the west foot, footway, uh, bits of the um, uh, east of the rocks, they were all perfectly competent. So that cut down the number of piles. And um, so altogether, uh, with the reduced number of piles, smaller diameter, uh, the shorter piles and the savings in mucking away all this filth and chalk and so on, we saved about 75% of the cost of the piling. And then we were all just about ready to, oh, sorry, yes, this, uh, I'll give it a little side then. Uh, the um, uh, bank seats were quite interesting. Uh, they had to be built in um, uh, sheet pile sheet excavations. Uh, one of them one in the centre of the, in the wide interval between the mains and the relief lines. Uh, but the uh, embankment cross section was quite, e quite interesting because you can see uh, on the left, the original embankment, which was quite good stuff presumably clay and stuff coming from solid cutting. But on the mainline side, on the right of this slide, uh, it was obviously made up with a whole load of ash and stuff uh, when they did the widening for the uh, station reconstruction in 1895-96. Uh, but then we really get on with the design work. We designed all the steel work done all the analysis for it, which I think I showed on the previous slide. We um, had to do major um, structural analysis uh, on the, um, the, the ICL 1900. Uh, we had continuous stationary about that high uh, and it also had to be analysed as two separate structures because there are too many redundancies for the um, uh, computer to cope with. But anyway, go, go, go back to where we got to. We, Finished all the uh, steelwork detailing, ready to go out to contract, 
And then the servant announced, well, we, we, we want an extra platform, please, because we're going to increase the services to Bracknell and uh, in particular and Waterloo. We said, well, we can't fit that on the bridge. So I had to do, although I was in bridge office, I had to do a very rapid scheme to see if I could actually get an extra platform and bring them together over the bridge um, in the length that we had. And I could, uh, we could just squeeze it in by widening out the um, the west end of uh, the boat structure to um, to get the the tail end of the lead, uh, which was needed for double to single line lead to get into platform 4B. So we did some rapid um, detailed uh, uh, alterations to the, uh, the display on the end of the bridge and uh, managed to fit it in. Uh, the seems it, it looks as if the the it, it, the initial investigations and the um, uh, detailed design took an awfully long time. But in fact, um, uh, we were delayed by inflation taking off at the time, having to get stuff reau reauthorized, and then um, having uh, got um, uh, the, the thing out to tender uh, for the main contract. Uh, we then had problems with uh, the three day week and it was a delay by another six months. But by uh, September 73, we were ready to start on site. Um, six months <laughs> delay. Anyway, uh, then Reading Post got hold of the job uh, and thought, oh, this is great. We need some. Uh, uh, some um, column inches on this, so I was persuaded to do a perspective drawing so that they could illustrate what the bridge was going to, be, going to look at, what it was going to look like. And in talking to their uh, their um, journalist, I happened to say it's a different sort of bridge. It's not like the old bridges where you've got just a simple structure sitting on top of two uprights like Stonehenge. Uh, <laughs> This is going to be rolled in, <laughs> ro rolled in on ball bearings and so on, and uh, you know, so roll up at the end of Stonehenge, you know, a bit, bit contrived, but uh, <laughs> it was all good, good publicity. Uh, now, from now on, I'm afraid the photographs and images aren't all that good because they're actually taken from some slides I had made for a presentation mm -hmm. I did at the Works Conference in 1975, I think it was. Um, and uh, well, unfortunately, all the photographs are somewhere with that you know, Brisbane Rail Track in deep store in their basement, so we can't find them. All the stuff up to about 19, I think about the mid, um, at the mid 60s, is nicely uh, filed at York in the museum, so it's um, in the, um, uh, the the archive there, but. Um, from there on, they had started the Central Reprographic Office at Waterloo, which fell into the hands of rail tracks when they private us. So anyway, um, so that's why some of these next slides are a bit fuzzy. So that was the site clearance um, on the south side where the old steam up over the, the southern walls. Uh, on the north side, we uh, put in this ramp to get up to the Bank seat foundations, um, and the um, in the uh, west of west of Bumbert, the foundation there was quite easy to do because we could just close the foot the footpath and direct you know, uh, move the um, uh, pedestrians over to the other side, uh, and um, the Juston injection. It was only a small plant. Uh, that's the best photograph I've got down on the left hand corner. Um, the uh, just a, a couple of pumps, uh, mixing tanks, uh, and um, pipes to lances to um, inject the gravels. Quite quite an easy process. The east foundation being, uh, well, that was as I say in the tunnel. Uh, I think I see, I think I missed a slide there. Mm. Oh yes, the, yeah, west 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 foundation being. Uh, there are only 42 uh, 43 piles altogether uh, because we saved so many using the 
uh, the old Pier Foundation. Uh, on the east side, that was the all that was needed for the um, top, the heading. Just a simple drive pit formed from uh, the um, uh, uh, from some standard uh, tunnel segments. Great head shield dropped in front and then uh, pushed forward into the embankment. And we had two gangs of tunnels tunneling. Well, they were they really were tunneling guys. They didn't do their stuff. They worked 24 hours a day, two shifts, came down from London every morning, every night. And um, they got right the way through the embankment, uh, completed the whole tunnel in four months. Uh, sounds a long time, but it was a long way. It was only 50, 50 metres they had to go. And um, all we had was uh, 20 mile an hour speed restriction on each track for um, about a week, I think it was, was it? Uh, well, as as the shield was passing under each track, uh, we had a 20 mile an hour speed restriction, negligible settlement, uh, and a little bit of packing done, and it was kept at home, and uh, traffic just wasn't stopped. Uh, and uh, again, all publicity, construction news, they had a pat on the back, and um, uh, everybody was very pleased. So the next thing was to do the piling. So they had to cut down tripod rig, standard sim simplex piling, soil mechanics piling, uh, with um, steel casings dropped into the ground with a um, uh, with a, um, a, a sort of um, coring tool to pull out the spoil. Uh, and um, then they were concreted with a very high slump, very wet concrete with a tremie pipe. And there's Albert North there up on the left. With his pipe, uh, looking at the um, keep it close eye on work, and then um, the reinforcement was dropped into the wet concrete in sections spliced together, and the casings were drawn, and uh, the um, once the piles had gone off, the reinforcement was placed, and um, the uh, foundation beams cast. Turned out to be relatively allowing for the space in there, uh, quite a simple operation. Bank seats, they were um, uh, constructed in uh, sheet pile pits, one in the centre of the track and the other two on the, on the embankment uh, with um, a temporary level crossing with a uh, crossing keeper and um, to look at, I think special. Uh, and the piling was done uh, between trains or with trains running uh, using a hush piling rig, because there was worries wor wor about the noise, using a drop hammer, um, the, uh, this method had a sound insulated box where the pile was pitched, the box closed up, and the drop hammer worked inside the box. It's quite effective actually. I, think, I think that's gone the way of all things these days with all the modern equipment. And then of course the piling was carried out within the power foundations at the um, bank seat, bank seats were cast. Uh, another first was um, post-tensioned pre-stressed brickwork. Uh, they were worried that the west abutment, having taken off the um, super, the uh, superstructure, uh, would um, <laughs> that its stability would be jeopardised, uh, and there was danger of it overturning. So. It would, uh, we uh, drilled down from track level, dropped in McAloy anchors, gradu stressed them and graded them in to um, produce uh, some compression in the back of the brickwork to uh, make sure that it didn't fall over. And again, that was done quite simply in the track intervals and uh, where we had to go uh, foul of the running line, they were done at night. And um, again, uh, no great fuss was made about it. Uh, in the meantime, temporary trestling for the steelwork is being set up, which is being delivered from Bustley uh, um, Engineering in uh, Ripley and Derby. Had to come all the way down the whatever motorways there were in those days, I can't remember, to be delivered to Reading. But unfortunately, the, the, um, initially the delivery address was Reading Station. 
So um, there's a hiatus in Prior Street with the first lot we came down. Um, but uh, they somehow got out of it and these um, subsequent deliveries were a bit more, a bit smoother. I'm not quite sure how they got to Reading Bridge over the river, um, but they must have come. Oh, I don't know. But that was the way they came. And the chap at the back, of course, he's the steersman. I don't know whether it's cold weather or not, but he seems to be quite happy there. But uh, uh, steering the real, the real, the, the rear trolley, and they were delivered in pairs, parked up on the side of the road, uh, waiting for the night closure to um, to erect, to erect the, um, the sections uh, over the road and um, to deliver these sections to the um, uh, uh, the side compound, and. That's uh, the uh, portal sections being erected. Uh, the, the the east leg and the east portion with the side span being erected on the on the dress wing, and that shows the how it spanned the road with traffic going underneath, no problem at all. Gives a good impression of how much wider the bridge was than the old road. Um, permanent four work was dropped on, as I said. It was um, probably properly reinforced, it was quite interesting. Uh, and um, uh, that was then cast. A particular sequence uh, where we cast the side span first, having taken away the support, so that that then created a hogging in the main span, which put some pre stress, some tensile stress in the um, uh, in, in the um, top flange of the steelwork uh, to um, well, effectively compensate for the um, uh, compression that was uh, uh, when it was loaded by the um, uh, when the job was finished. And then again, uh, we cast the main span next uh, with the main span plot, and that caused more tension in the top flange. So all these load cases, they had to be analysed uh, in the design stage. This is why we had so much print out a continuous station here it was and we looked up combined stresses worked out and so on to see what the end product was going to be allowing for not just the loadings and um, the pre-stress uh, but temperature um, and um, all, all, all the other uh, things which affect uh, the bridges when they're in use. Uh, the deck was concreted with uh, 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 pumped concrete fairly early uh, application of it and um, running posts they were very interested in what it was going to be like so I told them well the, both both uh, bridge decks would be larger than a tennis court so that was the next time. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think that young lady had ever played tennis but um, mm. she put on a pose. Uh, the um, uh, the steelwork, the, the, the structure being erected on um, uh, temporary ground beams. Uh, and um, uh, uh, because the road uh, gradient on, 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 either, on either side of the bridge would be a problem, uh, we laid the uh, temporary foundation be uh, beams that are graded to one in 200. Uh, and also the, um, that was continued into the bridge itself. Uh, so that the bridge would actually be rolled downhill. Uh, but because we wanted the, the bridge finally to be level, uh, we had varying thicknesses of packings underneath the bridge bearings uh, and, um, to, 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 uh, to keep the bridge level, so that when it went downhill, it would still be level and finish up in the right place. And that was a lot, of, lot more calculation. Uh, the um, Rolling in equipment looks terribly complicated, but actually it's really it's simple. Uh, two, two beams on either side and a cross beam for jacking the structure up to get the balls in and then to jack it back down again to um, uh, to uh, drop it down into its final position. And uh, the, all those jacks were uh, each, each side of the bridge was jacked up and, uh, and then let down again by um, uh, what, what was it, 30, uh, 36 coordinated 
hydraulic jacks. Um, so the actual, having completed the structures, the arrangements are rolling in, but then in two weekends, starting from the outside, working inwards for the demolitions and the preparation of the um, final position for the bridge. Uh, and um, off we went and again, ready the evening post. Where they got these headlines from, I don't know. The end of the, li the line for a giant. To... Anyway, um, the uh, um, road was closed on Friday evening to Monday morning. And Friday evenings, we took out the goods lines, uh, uh, tracks and the um, those parts of the span. And um, uh, but we actually reopened the road to buses on the Saturday uh, because they were concerned with the number of buses that were using the bridge. Um, we it would cause too much disruption. So again, uh, Reading. Corporation buses, they are very cooperative, and um, we passed, I don't know how many buses and the, the bridge whilst we were doing all this work, um, and uh, even double deckers. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 these, these, the, these, these were special low line buses, they, they, they were cut down buses because of the low bridges. But the strange thing was that the advertised headroom was an inch less than the actual height of the buses. But they got, they got, got through there somehow. Um, so on Saturday nights, we were taking out the spans for the main lines and the the relief lines and um, completing the uh, demolition at the tops of the apartments. Half the safety chaps, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, we dug over the top of the tunnel, lifted off the top sections of the of the um, heading and excavated away the top of the embankment um oops uh, and the um the roller parts have already been laid in and the um wrenching tackles have been uh, uh set up uh, the rolling in sequence um uh, yeah, my eyesight's getting awful uh first of all the week before uh, we'd remove all the trestle supports, put in the roller pot, the uh, the um, uh, the rolling in balls, and um, done a, uh, a short trial roll in a couple of meters just to make sure everything worked. And then um, on the designated Sunday mornings, we rolled in the structures. And having got them into the position, we jacked up the uh, structure and moved the roller balls and then had to jack up the trimmer beam to induce a permanent um, uh, reaction there so that when the main swam was loaded it didn't bounce and um, then we um, uh, we fixed the, the portal leg bearings and when the second span was put in uh, the second half we concreted we spliced the um, deck concrete rolling in that was the tackle pretty heavy tackle that was used uh, but uh, interesting, uh, yeah, we had four 10 ton winches, uh, one spare, uh, but actually we only used one to roll the bridge in, and the other one, uh, one of the others was used just to correct any slight crabbing that there might have been with the getting out of line. Uh, the um, This is all set up by Butterloo's, of course, and it's a very sophisticated control uh, mm -hmm. system, uh, CCTV and so on. The winches are the opposite side of the bridge from the um, from the control thing. I'm not quite sure why, but uh, and another interesting thing, of course, we had several hundred rolling, several hundred balls to um, roll this in on. So many were needed. We we we, we catch them from all the other regions, but well, it still wasn't enough. So we had to get more from the only place we could get them was from Russia, three inch diameter uh, ball bearings, and they were stainless steel. And I had one myself as a souvenir and I've lost it. I don't know who pinched it. Um, but uh, the um, uh, uh, obviously as it, as it rolled in, the uh, balls appeared at the far at the, at the tail end and they had to be returned to the other end, and dropped in for the, to, 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 to continue the structure rolling. So they had one of the chaps at the tail end picking the balls up 
and then dropping them into a sort of channel marble run. So they ran that to the other end, <laughs> the other chaps took it back, putting it in again. All, all very clever. And uh, that was the North Tech uh, finally rolled in, waiting for the South Tech to, um, to, 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 to join it a couple of weeks later. Uh, special classier bearings, there were uh, 39 of them, was it? 39 bespoke bearings designed, uh, all, uh, well, uh, several different sorts, uh, and every, all this expansion and contraction and uh, movement occurred from one fixed bearing at the middle of the, um, uh, the um, west um, side of the bridge. Uh, the south side, a bit more sophisticated this time. They've discovered um, hydraulic peckers for finishing off the abutment demolition. Um, and uh, the rolling in uh, uh, went uh, a beautiful sunny morning. Uh, I stood on top of that spoil here watching it begin pierce, I think, um, uh, as the sun rose over the gasworks. Um, and uh, it, was, it's, it took about 40 minutes, I think, about one and a half metres per minute. Uh, and uh, there it is in the flying position. Again, uh, ready to start tidying up and splicing the two together. Rather fuzzy slide, I'm afraid, uh, but it does show the, uh, the uh, south side in the final position. Those things sticking up at the end of the deck, they're the ballast wall units which are dropped in uh, at the end of the end of the um, uh, the east end of the deck, uh, but they were put there to um, speed the job up. So that they were, what they had to do was lift off the end and drop them in. Uh, also, the turnout for the to go into the new platform four B, you can just see that it's rather dark on the right hand side of the deck. Uh, that was laid in ready. Uh, and um, again, that's the view. You can see the curve of the public foot, footway where we had to widen out the end, so we just about squeeze in the the, the end of the platform. Uh, and that was platform four B, waiting for its access to get the track in. People wanted to use. Uh, again, dear old Reading Post, who had their publicity bit. Some lovely photographs from the top of the metal box building. That's the bridge before uh, the south side before it's rolled in. And that's it with a better illustration of the um, uh, fitting in position, ready to go to connect to platform 4P. Uh, and then by well, this time it was Reading Chronicle, they had a photograph of the aftermath of the second roll in. And uh, oops, sorry. Uh, and um, all the passenger tracks were back in use, 20 mile miles, TRSs by 6.30 the following morning on each uh, rolling. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was another rather fuzzy print, I'm afraid, but uh, uh, that was how we finished it. Uh, we took out the dumpling, and interestingly, we found all the, um, the um, east abutment and uh, box ring walls and so on of the original um, bridge uh, exactly as we expected to find them. Uh, and um, the side slope was pitched with some artificial stone and the whole site tied it up to um, hand over the two uh, Edding Borough to do their roadworks. Cost? Just over a million at uh, only 75, and I don't know whether I've got my inflation figures right, but that's equivalent to about 13 million now. <laughs> but it seemed to be cheap at the time, so mm -hmm. a million wouldn't it? Might be cheap now, no chance they do it for 13 million now. Right, quite. right. <laughs> I've no idea. I've been out of it for 25 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was the job as it looked in the summer of um, July 1975. Site all nicely tied it up, ready to be hand out, handed over, platform for B in use. And then there was a question of I wanted to show some photographs of the actual roadworks. So I inquired with Reading Borough Council Highways, 
And they said, oh, no, we, we wouldn't have done that child road, road lowering. That would have been Berkshire County Council. And I said to the guy, well, actually, I said, we're not talking about just a sort of planing off about six inches of resurfacing. I said, we're talking about lowering the excavation by about two metres to put in the tanking slab. He said, oh, he said, oh, I see. So I told him who the consultants were who did the uh, design. He said, oh, I'll have a look in the archives and, 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 and let you know whether we've got anything. So after about five weeks, he, I rang him up. He said, well, uh, I've had, uh, uh, they've been having a look, but no luck yet. And I said, well, what about photographs? It must have been bogus photographs and so on, and records for um, a lot of complicated um, services and drainage stuff underneath. He said, oh, well, I don't know. And he said, I've not, never seen any. I'll, I'll ask them to look again. <laughs> well, in the meantime, I'd inquired of um, the Berkshire Records Office whether they had anything, and they said, no, sorry, nothing. We've come back to the other. And then I had a mysterious phone call about, Two weeks later, saying, "Oh, Barchet Records Office here." They said, um, we, "We've just uh, come across some drawings. They haven't been um, uh, um, filed and annotated yet, but um, they, we think it might have to do with something that you're looking for." So I went to the Barchet Records Office, and lo and behold, there were the entire contract drawings produced by House and Sutherland for the for the roadworks. So I said, "Well." Where did these come from? Oh, they were deposited recently. I said, who deposited them? Oh, um, uh, uh, Reddingborough Camps. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so I uh, took my little camera and um, took a photograph of the most interesting drawing, which was the staging drawing, which is a bit faint, but you know, these are 50 years old, these drawings. But that was stage one, where they lowered the road Mm. Uh, and put in the tanking slab for the east uh, carriageway first, diverted the traffic onto that. And then they did the west carriageway in two stages, first the footpath and a bit of the tanking slab, and then um, finished it off. Uh, and uh, there was a huge multiplicity of services and drainage and things like that that had to be done, but too much to the to show. But interestingly, um, I had a phone call whilst they were doing this, and I should have gone down and taken some photographs myself, but I was a bit busy, really. And um, yeah, they said, um, it's the resident engineer here by a council. The contractor's very concerned because they've dug down about a metre or so, and they can't see any support for the foundations on the east side of your bridge. Uh, is that all there is? And I said, no, that's a pause. And they said, we can't see any. And of course, you couldn't see the piles um, because the rake was so great and the average rake of the piles was only three and a half. And I said, well, I can assure you there are piles there. I said, about every uh, 15 metres or so, uh, there, there's a near vertical pile, this sort of backstop pile for certain, cope with certain load conditions. So they dug out a bit. I said, oh, I'll find a pile there. And so I said, well, you're quite OK to carry on. Uh, down to your two point whatever it was meters depth because it will stand up. <laughs> but they still insist, they still insist on having a letter of indemnity uh, to um, uh, reassure them that we would take responsibility if the bridge started to sink a bit. But uh, anyway, anyway, it all worked and they finished their roadworks and everything was lovely. But they didn't finish the the southern part, because there's so many objections, they decided to terminate where they got to at the roundabout south of um, uh, Ruston Road Bridge. And that was what it was intended to be done south of the bridge. Um, the um, Forby Gardens were on the left, and the building right in the middle at the top. Uh, that building was demolished and replaced by the Davidson House. But it was specifically built to allow the road to go underneath. Mm -hmm. So I wonder whether parts of Davison House basement is actually part of what was going to be the remainder of the, the, the distribution road. But um, I'm rather glad they didn't mess about with Fortby Gardens or put a horrible bridge right over the top of the Kings Road. Uh, but um, 
I couldn't resist putting this photograph in because I think it's a rather super photograph that um, snow and so on. It shows a lot of interesting things. You can just see the completed Vassan Road Bridge. It's in 1981, this was. And a big car park, which was destined for development, of course. They eventually built Apex Plaza and the Brunel um, uh, concourse. And, uh, but um, it's quite a big gap there, look at the bottom, between platform, the, the track for Platform 4B and the fence line. And that was because when we were agreeing with the State Department where we should put the fence when I was doing the detail design for Platform 4B, um, which I eventually did when I moved to New Works. Um, uh, uh, he, he said, well, you know, normal, normal clearance to the uh, track. And I said, well, what if they want to have the platform and you developed that site and you ain't got the room? So I said, well, that's going to cost us anything to shift out another 15 feet or so. So we put the fence well clear of the existing track. I worked it out, it'd be just nicely clear, clear enough for an extra track platform and an extra track. And lo and behold, 10 years ago, that's exactly what, what they put in. So mm -hmm. it's quite pleased about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so everything worked beautifully. Uh, and the, um, had, had, they haven't had any problems. I think there might have been the occasional flooding hiccup with um, high tide in the Red River. But uh, the only major incident was uh, the sewage overflow uh, mm -hmm. uh, back in 2018. That was a bit smelly. But, um, the next development, of course, was the station reconstruction, uh, where they needed to extend the bridge north and south to um, uh, cater for the extended platforms four, five, and six to get twelve cars in, and then of course the fan and tracks coming out of um, platforms, um, uh, whatever it is, eleven to fifteen. So um, they added bits. Um, on both sides. Uh, they put five extra portals on the south side and built a retaining wall alongside um, the uh, the back of the new platform. And um, they put three extra portals. I don't know why they put three all scrunched up like that. It looks a bit odd. Uh, they do fan out the perhaps the centres of the others on the um, Paddington side. But the disappointing thing is, I mean, look at that. I mean, why on earth do they use concrete? Um, and a massive great edge beam. I know I shouldn't criticize other people's work, but um, um that that's that's not pretty. Also, they've got this great big hefty edge beam. Uh, the original edge beam on the south side was much shallower. Uh, well, it wasn't an edge beam, there were cantilevers and a very, very shallow, I made sure that there was a very shallow um, valance beam, which gave a good shadow line on the uh, on the portals, but also exposed a lot of the, uh, with, with the uh, tape on the cantilevers, you can actually see more of the portals. Mm -hmm. but, um, and using steel, of course, you can paint, paint out all the graffiti. Mm -hmm. um, so, that's what we finished up with. Uh, the left there's the original design, and on the right it's rather well better. So that's the bridge we've got now. Um, uh, and the uh, publicity before they started the rail bridge uh, would be extended whilst maintaining the aesthetic appearance of the framed bridge. Not sure whether they've done that, certainly. The Geograph project. They start off their report with saying this rather ugly bridge taking Vaston Road in the east part of Reading in the Ring Road underneath the Great Deception. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, uh, at least the bridge is still there. It's quite a few of my projects aren't. They've disappeared. They haven't been knocked down, redeveloped, or whatever. And um, it's more or less how we built it. So, so, any questions?
Mark. Just a question on drainage, and you showed in the original part of the presentation the stream that was beneath the custom lane. Yeah. Did that just disappear? Because it can't just disappear. Presumably it went into a sewer or well, went somewhere. I, I, I don't quite know what happened to that. Uh, <laughs> because it had disappeared by the time we extended Baston Road Bridge to build platform at 4A. Yeah. Disappeared to the extent that when we actually uh, excavated the foundation of the east abutment, um, uh, we using the simple trench sheets, thinking it's just going to be silt and mud, so get down some reasonable gravel. We had a rather large inundation of water, uh, which we had a job to get rid of by dropping cement bags into the uh, uh, the, um, the excavation where the water was coming in and so on. Uh, and we got got mad in the end. Uh, but looking at the old, some very old plans, it was even at that stage that I discovered that there was one of those streets that we were right on top of something called the Plumery Ditch. It was the one coming in from the east, which is thought that might have been something to do with the uh, the um, lead uh, production by the monks in the abbey, hence Plumery. Uh, Nobody quite knows why it's called that, but that was on the old plans. That was exactly where the plumbery ditch was, which was one of those streams. So it had disappeared, and there was no visible drainage to it, uh, uh, you know, a drainage replacing it anywhere. But um, in the course of the job, and as far as I know, when the road looks, uh, there was another one coming in from sort of uh, southwest as well. Uh, but, um, uh, we, we we made no provision for it in 1965, and we had no reason to make provision for anything in uh, 1973, 74, 75, because we didn't have any. We, we didn't go down that deep. Uh, only only with the piles, and of course the piles were cased well, with temporary casings anyway. So it's all a mystery, like the trestle bridge, you know. The, Thank you, David. Sorry. Um, Yes, were you disappointed that we lost the footbridge over on the, the town side? Yes, yes, yeah. Is it uh, a shame to have lost that? It's very hard to cross there. Yeah, um, it was presumably something that the Reading Borough Council accepted. It had be already become pretty derelict anyway. Yeah. But we'd, uh, they, we'd actually put in that lovely sort of curving yeah. staircase, real Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire, yeah. Yeah. Mm. and um, which was yeah, that that was paid for and, and uh, requested by um, the Reading Borough Council. And there was a footpath that came down the back of Platform Four A uh, that came down to that uh, that footbridge over the long yeah. and, and the idea was it would connect up at high level with the mezzanine level of the of the metal box company uh, building. Uh, which was all designed so that there would be high level walkways and so on, which going to carry on across into um, the fall reef for the gardens. Uh, but it never came to anything because that sort of all petered out that grandiose development. The um, uh, yes, you can see there the um, uh, that sort of lowest story yeah. of the metal box company that was supposed to be uh the sort of pedestrian mezzanine mm -hmm. level where, where they had the entrance i think they had to sort of rather turn things around and have the entrance somewhere uh the other side more closer to forby road but uh mm -hmm. you, you you can just make out the footpath um yes this way yeah yeah, you actually need something moving on going over. And yeah. it's something we had to curtail it there and uh, bring it down to, to the road on a zigzag sequence, which meant that that was the idea. It was going to go right there across. The, um, uh, also, uh, you can see, uh, I don't know what about that, was also an access that went to the birthing sidings, which were put in for the um, stock. You see that curve bit up there, yes. uh, which we put in in 1965 uh, for the um, 
electric stock to be cleaned and watered. Um, and uh, it's fortunate we did because uh, nice little story about Platform 4A. The um, inspecting officer came down with the then chief civil engineer, Freddie Barnwell, I think it was, um, to um, they, they, they were looking at a, you know, uh, inspecting for approval several small, smallish works. And one of the first ones was um, Platform 4A, which of course terminated the line from uh, from uh, working and uh, what to do, really. And um, the inspecting officer took one look at it. He said, well, where's the other platform, Freddie? And Pla Freddie said, well, what do you mean? No, I don't, don't understand. He said, well, did you not know that all railways have to terminate in at least two platforms? Safety reasons. Hmm. So I think Freddie blustered a bit and he said, well, I will decline to inspect this uh, uh, particular project mm. until further notice and it was never inspected. Mm. So it wasn't until we actually built platform 4B that it terminated in two platforms, but that was in the blue book, the um, you know, the, 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 the regulations for uh, railways, so that if there was you know some problem uh, in the station, they still had somewhere for the next train to go. But I think they got round it by saying, well, we've got those berthing sidings down there with the platform. We could always detrain somewhere there. But the platform was only about that wide. Yeah. It's just, just enough to start to go along and open the doors and sweep out the cigarette ends. So, not nice, not, not nice little story, though. Thank you. Sorry, I've got to work on. Yes, right. <laughs> Things like it's Yes. Are you all? Oh, all right, Rick. I was just going to say something fascinating photograph dick because it shows how self-sufficient the country was in town gas with all with the um <laughs> that's whole business and early power station chimneys in the distance yes yeah all coal fired and yeah. then it was converted to more oil farm what uh, was it uh, yeah. yeah but so self-sufficient in energy mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. so fantastic yeah. 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 yes it's amazing what you can dig out <laughs> that was taken from the top story of uh, western mass yeah. Mm. Sorry. Welcome. Uh, then, then there must have been. Uh, <coughs> if, if it's about permanent way, don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> there must have been a lot of interfaces with uh, with um, uh, with the railway in, it, in itself. Oh yeah. Um, you kept very very closely to the program. Obviously, um, closely did to it. Which suggests to me that the relationship between BR and the then Reading Borough Council must have been pretty good. Um, would you like to comment on that? Was was that in fact the case? Uh, yes, it was. Yeah, they they, uh, they sort of said this is a nice scheme. They'd like to do it and uh, just get on with it. And they paid. <laughs> uh, yes, it was um, no problem at all. No interference. No. Petty fogging, nothing like that at all. They, 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 um, uh, they knew what they were going to get, and we paid them for the requirements for the, um, you know, to enable the road lowering to go ahead, and that affecting the bridge or that, with, you know, because that, that was one of the objectives was to make it easy for them. They could do it without any difficulty. But um, glad they didn't ask us to take on the road lowering because that was. Just if looking at the drawings, it must have been a nightmare for the foot services and so on. I mean, we had enough uh, ourselves with the uh, the few services that there were in the um, uh, the footpaths. I mean, we found the old um, uh, power electricity power cables there about that diameter, solid copper. Contracted it well out of that, scrapped it, but, uh, uh, and. Um, uh, and, and we had very good cooperation amongst, well, multiplicity of other departments. Everybody was involved. You know, the ODN, the you know, because we had uh, four, five inch water, no, no, four inch water main over the bridge, which served the whole of Reading Depot and everything east, including feeds back under the track to the um, the old Sun site. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know there was P way. Um, and s and of course, and then all the business of the gas supplies to the switch heaters and, um, and 
yeah, we, we, we had some quite quite large attendances of project meetings when we we're planning the job. But um, I, I think they were a bit surprised when they were all called to this meeting. This this sort of twenty nine year old stood up and said, "Right, this is what we're going to do, and this is when we're going to do it." <laughs> but there we go. Yeah. It was done. And that was a lot of fun too, Scott. Roddy, if big if you were faced with the same challenge today, yeah, would you go about it the same way? Would you be allowed to go about the job the same way? <laughs> well, that's two, that's two different questions. Yeah, <laughs> very different. I, I, well, I don't know. I, I mean, I. I'm older and wiser, but uh, I think I'd have been a lot more nervous about it today than I was then. Uh, but, you know, he just sort of came up with the ideas, mm -hmm. investigated them and, and did them. A lot of the activities that, that you did, especially with the sheep on in between the, the tracks, would oh, yeah. just be uh, an absolute mm -hmm. no-no. Yeah, was working on live tracks, no-no. Um, signaling <laughs> reconnection times. Um, we know how long they can be there, and we feel oh, 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 hours, and hours and hours of testing, quite <laughs> rightly. Yeah, but, but the amount of time you do a factor into possession. Yeah. Well, we didn't have any possessions for the sheep piling. <laughs> <laughs> between tracks. Yeah. Well, it was done not even between. Well, yes, a yeah, bit more sort of between yeah. trains, but only with trains with the, with the tracks opening. Yeah. Uh, with, 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 with the lines open. Yeah. But there were provisions required of the contractor to have the jib of the crane locked. Yeah. So it couldn't move the, the things that there would be special precautions should the jib fall and all the rest yeah. of the songs. But they, they were all followed and it worked. Mm -hmm. And when the men were working, the barrier was shut. They couldn't go back to the ports. Mm -hmm. That um, the um the 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 finish, permission of the crossing keys. It was probably in touch with the signal in the signal yeah, box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and everything could just be done these days. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> yes. Um, it was uh, managed. Yes. Risk was managed. It wasn't just dismissed as not being permissible. It was just managed. managed yeah. out there. So, from the point of view of, yes, I would. Want to do it the same way, but I wouldn't be allowed to, of course. <laughs> that photograph is the last time we had serious snowfall mm. on London Division. Yeah. <laughs> I was at Slough in that December, and we had 11 inches of snow at uh, where it was there, but certainly at Slough, I measured 11 inches of snow on the track. Mm. Well, the trains are running because if you see the rails. <laughs> <laughs> One thing, the traffic jam would have been far worse if that hadn't have been done. Mm. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, well, I don't think we've got any more questions. Everyone's still smiling, but uh, yeah. um, thank you, Dick. Um, could I ask Malcolm to do the vote of thanks, please? <laughs> If this is the third time that you've uh, graced us with your uh, um, historic um, <laughs> discussions. Mm -hmm. One thing that did impress me, apart from the, 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 the your actual content with it, is the amount of uh, um, work you've done to look at the historic detail. Um, and find out a great deal. I mean, even with this one tonight, going back to, um, you know, into the 1840s and 1850s to see what the history of the whole thing was. Um, it's not just historically important, but I do think that it keeps the whole development of the thing in context. And you brought that to light with the fact that you were able to use existing abutments and those sort of things and build those into the design. Are there in fact we go into that sort of thing enough nowadays? I know, you know, 
but uh, probably not. Anyway, it has been extremely interesting tonight, yet again. Um, and uh, no doubt we shall see something else into the future. <laughs> one, thing, one thing that, again, that is, has been brought out with one or two of the questions tonight as well. It's very difficult to compare doing that job back in, 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 the, in the early 1970s, which to people like bunch of us here tonight doesn't really seem very long ago. I've <laughs> been in great changes since. A lot of it, the changes are because of uh, methodology, what sort of things are available to us, all those sorts of things, and the way that you roll that bridge in. Things have developed from that, but still the principles are all, are all very much still the same. We've not really uh, developed all that much further. What I do feel, though, is that when we looked at the uh, your final cross on there, I'm glad you put the question mark on the 13 million. So I think that might have been taken up with consultants and contractors cost before we started working this in the age, but anyway. <laughs> That's a bit of in cheek. Anyway, Dick, it has been a real pleasure to listen to you. We've learned a great deal about it. It is really nice to look back into the history, into something like this. Which, and this is, of course, it's very local. Um, everybody knows about uh, uh, about this bridge and so on. And we shall walk back under it tonight as well. We might have a look at a few things, too. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. You'll find that drain you were looking at. Anyway, thank you very much, Dick, again. Please join me in thanking many of you. Thank 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 you. Um, Richard, next meeting, please. Uh, it's in September. That is the date then. The 6th of September. The 6th of September. Thank you very much. 6th of September. Speaker not fixed yet, uh, but it would be good as usual. Not quite as good as tonight, no doubt, but there we are. Um, in the meantime, names for the visit to the Reading Train Care Depot on the uh, 7, 8, Tuesday, the 18th of July, please. I've got a list here to start if anyone wants to put their names down now. Uh, otherwise, get in touch with me or respond to some sort of reminder that we'll probably send round in a week or two's time, giving a few more details. What I'll do now is confirm with uh, Andrew Skinner that we're definitely up for the 18th. At least I am, even if nobody else comes. No, uh, no. Oh, um, uh, you'll come too. Right, OK, yeah. we'll do it. A bit like when we went to the Taunton High Output Depot, isn't it? Or the UK yeah, as well. Three of them. So there, right, that's it for me. OK. Good. Thank you very much. No other notices. No. Any, anything else from anyone else? Got anything important to tell us? <laughs> OK, well, that, all that leaves me to say is thank you very much for coming this evening. Thank you to those who have listened online as well. Um, thanks once again to Dick for um, all the work he put in, because mm. it's very difficult with these old pictures, you know, it's all steam powered. You've got to scan them all in and it takes a lot of time getting those together. So, yeah, thank you very much for putting so much time and effort into researching it and finding all the information to make it a very interesting presentation. So thank you very much. And uh, we hope to see you on 6th of September. Then you to be advised. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How many online? When? Well, I think the peak was only on about 10 people. Yes, <laughs> 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 <laughs>